I'm not sure how this video is going to go because it's a very emotional topic. Um, the death of Ruth Perry has raised the profile of Ofsted once more. This is the subject of my doctoral thesis. I originally was motivated for that research um, to research the impact of inspection on teachers by phone calls from teachers crying in toilets, head teachers having breakdowns and leaving the profession. What struck me when I started researching is that Geoffrey and Woods and um, Cullingford in the late 1990s likened Ofsted inspection to being an emotional assault with the emotional equivalence of a parent dying. And they basically connected the experience of Ofsted to the emotions of fear and deep deprofessionalization and things like that. So I wanted to look into that because it, it, it just is too worrying and too important. So part of it goes is on so many levels. So one is the rate the ratings. So Ofsted have outstanding, good, requires improvement and inadequate. That means anything other than good is using terminology that is negative, requires improvement, get better. Now, I compared this to the independent sector inspections. So ISI, the independent equivalent to Ofsted, have different, um, what do you call it, ratings. Excellent, good, sound and unsatisfactory. Now, sound is not great, but it isn't as damning as requires improvement. The terminology can make a difference. Unsatisfactory is a different word from inadequate. If you compare it to Education Scotland at the time that I was doing my research, it was confident, partially confident and not confident. And again, there's a lot more positivity in that. I'd spoken with um, Wilshaw um, when I, at the time I was doing my research and he agreed that Ofsted was a judgmental regime, but wouldn't let me use that in my writing. He was like, oh no, you can't use that quote, and he changed it. And I was like, oh, come on, you're telling me it's judgmental. And it's that judgmentalism that is causing so much stress and worry. So there were positive comments um, about state sector inspections, but they were mainly towards the HMI who come in after a negative inspection. So it's all gone wrong. There's everybody crying. Then HMI come in and they're supportive and they bring them back. Now, what was happening, what I found through interviewing people in both the state and independent sector, in the state sector, and they, f they felt that the inspectors were coming in with a pre- pre-judgment if you like so if they were coming in and looking for good they found good they would go away if they found something that wasn't quite what they were looking for and then come back say oh I'll come and see you again in a bit giving the teachers time to recover but if they were looking for it to be damning boy did they find it damning and this meant that the stress levels just rose and rose what they did find was if you had a supportive head teacher, it made a difference to the, to the staff. But there needs to be the confidence in that head teacher to start with. If there's anything that is making that teacher, that head teacher, feel less confident because of things that have been said, that's going to trickle down. And it puts tremendous pressure on the teaching. I've seen loads of um, comments on social media where they talk about the teaching being affected by Ofsted in a bad way and it is because the curriculum gets narrowed everybody's thinking oh, I've got to get this right for Ofsted no you've got to get it right for the children but there's this sword of Damocles hanging over everyone's head and that is preventing the real work from happening people saying they had to match what was happening in one classroom to another classroom even if the needs of the children were different but because it had to all be the same so it would please Ofsted. Um, the feedback from ISI was all positive, basically. Any negatives were things like, oh, I don't want to let my school down, you know, oh, I don't want to let the head down. It was a much more positive feeling when I was interviewing them. Every single teacher in the state sector, apart from one, cried during interview or reported teachers crying during inspection, teachers sort of hiding and crying. 
that's not what it should be about. The responses were, you know, fearful, panicked, pressured, distressed, stressed, angry, traumatised, judged, disrespected, unsupported, voice, voiceless, their teachers, their professionals, disconnected, cynical, lacking in confidence and just saying it was horrible. There was one person who just kept saying, we're all rubbish, we're all rubbish, all we get told is that we're rubbish. How is that going to get positive feelings and positive attitudes for our children if that's how we're made to feel? The negatives in ISI, a bit fearful and a bit panicked and pressured and anxious, what was interesting is they were mainly linked to letting the school down, as I said before, the frustration of waiting, actually wanting the inspection to happen because they, they wanted to share things. They were saying in the independent sector that all good because we can point out the things that are wrong and by being inspected we will be forced to make it better. Nobody wanted to point out anything that was wrong when it came to Ofsted. They were like, no, 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 we've got to cover it up because we feel judged. It's judgmental and therefore we, we feel we've got to only show the great things. You know, as a teacher, I've been observed obviously in, by Ofsted and by um, ISI. And as a teacher, I want feedback that tells me how I can be better. All of us want to improve, be better, but not in a way that's going to make me feel judged, damned, all those negatives. And I've never worried about inspection. I'm one of those people who goes into things with confidence, but I've seen the damage around me. In the independent sector, teachers who were new to that sector were nervous about the inspection and then relieved when they actually saw what it was like. So, so why is this? Now, part of it is because when you have the ISI inspections, it's really clear that you've got teachers who are doing the inspection. And therefore, that's a sense of camaraderie, you know, so like, oh, you know, you could be being inspected next week. You never know. So there's a sense of critical friendship, support, having a chat. You know, I can remember having something that I'd missed, just a simple line in the, um, in the, in the special needs policy that I'd missed in early years. It was there generally for the the whole um, policy, but I needed to explicitly say it with regard to EYFS. And all that happened is the inspector called me over and said, you need this line. I'm like, oh, okay. She said, well, go and put it in. So I'm like, okay, it's there. She goes, yeah, but you need it to explicitly say EYFS. I did that. She said, right, upload it to the website. Tick, done. Now, although that's done according to Ofsted guidelines, it's done by the ISI inspector, who was so approachable, it wasn't a problem. I just added that line to the policy. Not a big deal. So we need to change the Ofsted framework. We need to change the approach and the structure of inspection and introduce a system that is based around a critical friendship and peer review approach. If we change the grading, the terminology, the consequences, we can change the fear. We can reduce the fear and make it something where people look to inspection as a way to further develop. Okay, Guidance for heads of school and SLT members regarding the leadership for inspection could be more supportive. Explain that this is how we're going to get better, not, you know, um, we're here to damn you. So if I, I created a, a four-strand model of leadership, which was um, to basically build positive relationships. That was the first thing. And to have um, long-term visions that were based on shared values. Okay, When you've got that, you get systemic learning and you get transparency and everything comes around more positively. Now, there's no reason why we can't build our inspection process on that model, both the valuing people in school, within the school, but also the inspectors valuing and respecting and building positive relationships with the schools that they go into. It doesn't have to be this one-off scary thing that's going to happen. If it's predicated on judgment, 
and data, then it feels criticising negative emotional responses follow from that. If instead it's built in continuity, then you can get the positive relationships developing, building on trust, critiquing rather than criticising, you know, offering support to schools and allowing them to thrive. I had this sort of rotational model of, so two inspectors would come in and visit the school, then one of them would drop out on the next visit, which wouldn't be too far away, but another one would join. So, and then the visit after that, the one who joined would remain, the one who had been there for the first, the prior visit would drop out, and another one would come in. So there's always somebody who's been there before. So you can build that relationship, build that trust, and build that continuity, but not have it so comfortable that, you know, um, you're not going to get that objective look at things because we need that objectivity if we're going to develop. This is, this is all so doable. That's what's frustrating. It's not rocket science. You know, talk to teachers. How do they want to be treated and respected? And you'll see that, you know, no teachers aren't frightened of, you know, learning how to be even better at teaching. They're frightened of what the consequences of a judgmental regime is going to do. What's it going to do to the school? What's it going to do to them personally? If we took away that fear, inspection could be an opportunity for growth and development. We need those shared values that we build everything upon with the child at the centre and support positive relationships, long-term visions that are all built on this continuing relationship, this development, this trust. That's what we need and that is just what is not there. This business of it being worse than the death of a parent. One of the teachers I interviewed said that inspection was worse than her mother dying. That's damning. That is really damning. And it's 20 years after Cunningford and um, you know Perriman had actually already said this. They had said it 20 years earlier and what, nothing had changed, no improvements, that's not acceptable. We've got to move forwards. Please look at my thesis on my website, you can download it. I've uploaded it only recently but only because there's been so much demand for it. We've got to keep going for change.